Okay everyone, today we'll be talking about the most extreme exoplanets in the universe. To understand what I'm talking about, I need to learn to you all about planets that are tidally locked. It's basically when only one side of the planet faces the sun. So one side of the planet gets daytime and the other is in eternal blackness. Now that we're done with the little science lesson, my friend here will help visualize the planet's weather more effectively. We'll stop off at the planet Korot 7b. This planet is basically hell, reaching up to almost 2,600 degrees Celsius. Remember that tidally locked stuff? 2,600 degrees Celsius is on the day side. On the night side, it can go down to negative 212 degrees Celsius. Now, the temperature difference is so stark because the planet has a rocky surface, so the atmosphere can't transfer the warm heat as well as gas giants. You know, it kind of reminds me of everyone was in some kid's pool. We're all just in the hot tub, chilling, until someone dares me to jump in the pool. And that was a stark temperature difference. Moral of the story, don't jump in the pool. Now that we're done with childhood memories, my friend will be visiting the planet WASP-76b. This planet is known for being extremely close to its host star. In fact, the planet is so close that the sides that face the star reaches temperatures around the 2,400 degrees Celsius range. The side that's faced away from the star gets to be around 1,400 degrees Celsius. There's a reason for me telling you about the temperatures. That reason being that metals like sodium, calcium, and magnesium were found in the atmosphere of the planet. But the most important metal that was found is iron. At 2,400 degrees Celsius, iron could actually be vaporized. Once that vaporized iron goes to the cool kids side of the planet, get it because it gets colder, it condenses into liquid, raining down onto the non-existent surface for no one except my friend to enjoy. I will now be dropping off my friend on the planet HD 189733b. Really rolls off the tongue there, scientists. Ugh, whatever happened to a name like Mars? Whoever named this is probably the same guy that puts useless silent letters in words, and is probably the guy that came up with the word for the fear of long words. If I ever met that person that named this planet, I'll ask who their dealer is, because you have to be smoking crack to name a planet that- Anyways, this planet is 64.5 light years away from our solar system, and is a bit larger than Jupiter. The size really doesn't concern us, so let's talk about the forecast on this planet instead. The planet looks like Earth because it's blue, but don't be deceived, because the weather is a different story. The wind blows at 5,400 miles an hour, or seven times the speed of sound. So you'd be whipped around the planet like there's no tomorrow. Oh, yeah, and the planet isn't blue because there's liquid water there. No, the planet is blue because the clouds are silicon. And you know what clouds do? Cause rain! That's right, little Jimmy. So the planet rains little glass shards of silicon, but it gets better. Because of the speed of the wind, it is actually able to make the raining glass go sideways. Fucking sideways. So you could sleep well tonight knowing that somewhere in this godforsaken universe, it's raining shards of glass sideways. So if you're like me and you're happy that summer's over because it's not literally 110 degrees Fahrenheit, just be glad that you aren't my friend who put his life on the line to entertain you for around three minutes. Sorry if you have school tomorrow. Thank you for watching and uh, see ya.